Welcome back everybody. In this video, we've been given a Galois group, Galois group of Q adjoining the square root of 3 comma i over Q, and two specific automorphisms called sigma and tau, where sigma sends root 3 to minus root 3, and also sends i to i, and then tau fixes the square root of 3, but sends i to minus i. And the question is asking us to find the fixed field of the subgroup generated by the product tau sigma. Now, if we apply tau sigma to uh, the square root of 3, this will be tau of, well, see, sigma sends this to minus square root of 3. Tau is not going to see the minus sign, so this will just become minus tau of the square root of 3. That's because tau is an automorphism, and it fixes rational numbers. And then it fixes the square root of 3, so this will be minus the square root of 3. Now, what if we applied tau sigma to i. Well, sigma is going to fix i, so this will be tau of i, which is minus i. Fine. Let's see what happens if I square tau sigma. So if I square tau sigma and apply it to the square root of 3. So this will be tau sigma applied first to, well, what happens when I apply it once to the square root of 3? Let's see. Tau sigma of the square root of 3 is tau sigma of, well, we just saw square root of 3 gets sent to minus the square root of 3. Again, it's an automorphism, so it won't see that minus. Well, it's an automorphism that fixes q, so it won't see the minus. And so we get tau sigma of the square root of 3, which again, we know is the negative of the square root of 3. And so this gives us the square root of 3. So in total, the square root of 3 is fixed. All right, what if we applied tau sigma squared to i? Well, we already saw that when you apply tau sigma to i, you get minus i. So this will be the same thing as tau sigma of i, which again is just going to flip it back to i for the same reason as with the square root of 3. So this tells you that tau sigma squared is the identity. And so the subgroup generated by tau sigma is just equal to the identity, oops, right, it's the identity and tau sigma. If you go to take another power, you just get back the identity again. Okay, now remember, our goal is to find the fixed field of Q adjoined root 3i under this subgroup generated by tau sigma. So it means we only need to find which elements are fixed by the identity and by tau sigma. Now, everything's fixed by the identity, so that's not going to restrict us at all. So we really just need to figure out which elements of q adjoin the square root of 3i are fixed by tau sigma. Okay, so to do that, first we're going to write down a basis for a basis for the cube root of the square root of 3 comma i. So a basis is going to be, well, what if we were just doing a basis for the square root of 3 adjoined to q? There the answer would be 1 square root of 3. And if we were just doing it for i, it would be 1i. So by a result we proved in class, the way we get a basis for q adjoining the square root of 3 and i is to just multiply these two bases together in any way we can. So we'll get 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times i is i, root 3 times 1 is root 3, and root 3 times i is root 3i. Okay, so there's my basis, and now... I know that what is my tau sigma going to do? Well, let's write down our basis. So uh, we'll write it in the same order. Uh, so we have i, root 3, root 3i. And what does sigma tau or tau sigma do? It's going to fix 1. And we just saw that up here that tau sigma of i was minus i. Tau sigma of root 3 was minus root 3. So that was up here. And then what does it do to root 3i? Well, because tau sigma is an automorphism, I just look at what it does to i and root 3 and multiply those results together. So minus i minus root 3 will give me root 3i. Okay, so from here I can see that tau sigma fixes, so what is the fix of tau sigma? It fixes the basis elements 1 and it also fixes the basis element root 3i. 
and it does not fix i or the square root of 3. And so that's going to tell me that the fix q adjoin square root of 3i of the group generated by tau sigma is equal to q adjoin root 3i. If you're not totally convinced, let's write it out more formally. If I apply tau sigma to some arbitrary element of q adjoin root 3i, it's going to look like some a times 1 plus a bi plus a c root 3 plus a d root 3i. Okay, it's not going to affect a, because that's rational. Uh, it's going to send i to minus i, so well, instead of plus bi, we'll get minus bi. This was a times 1. It sends root 3 to minus root 3, so this will be minus c root 3. And then this last one, we already saw root 3i is sent to root 3i, so this is plus d root 3i. And so we can see if it's going to be a fixed point, then, well, there's no condition on a, but b and minus b have to be the same, which tells you b is 0. And similarly, here c and minus c have to be the same, so c has to be 0. And then there's no condition on d. And so that tells you, whoops, that tells you that your a plus bi plus c root 3 plus d root 3i has to actually equal a plus d root 3i. So that's what all of your fixed elements have to look like, and clearly they're in the span of 1 comma root 3i, which, okay, that's going to be given by this field.